my question regarding taklid. Uh, can you tell me the importance of taklid and when the Ayatollahs give it guidance and how do they justify that this has come from the Arabic? Is there any reference in any books where we have to do taklid mm -hmm. because I've got a couple of my Shia friends who don't actually do taklid because they say there is no reference. Right. Because the Ayatollahs, uh, depending on which Ayatollah you're doing your taklid from, sometimes vary from very point from point. Mm. So I just wanted to ask them that what is the importance and where is the reference for us to do taklid? Okay, thank you very much, brother. Thank you. I think that would require me uh, to give a little yeah, bit of detail. That might require a few days to explain. Um, I'll just quickly give a brief yeah. answer. As far as the references are concerned, there are many, many verses in the Holy Quran. Um, you know, um, Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, verse number 119 or 121. I, I'll just read the verse and you can check it. Lawla nafara min You know, the whole verse is talking about that it is not. Uh, you know, it wasn't. It is not possible for all the believers to go and seek knowledge. Mm. So then, why doesn't a group of them go and seek knowledge, and come back and teach the others? Yeah. So that is uh, the whole concept of learning religion and teaching it to the others. So that's where the whole concept comes in. Secondly, So they should have a deeper understanding. Fiqh. It has been used used here, and mushtadin or taqlid or faqih. That's the word we use from the Holy Quran. Again, in other verses, it says uh, two different places, the same verse, Nahal and another surah. Fas'alu ahla dhikra in kuntum la ta'alamun. Ask the ones who know if you don't know. This is about the Imams, alayhim mm -hmm. but it is very general. It includes anyone who doesn't know, they should ask anyone who does know. So it is with a you know, medical expert, uh, with an engineer, if you are going to make a house. So it is very logical. All the verses in the Holy Quran that indicate. Um, and uh, a layman or a common person referring to an alim refer to taqlid because you would refer to an expert in whatever field that you, you mm. need, you know, referring to. Making a house, you need an expert to refer to. Likewise, in religion, there are people who spend uh, most of their life learning and teaching so they become experts. There are many traditions, just one hadith from the 12th Imam al Islam, the 11th Imam. The 11th Imam al Islam has this one hadith in al hatajat of Tabarsi, 700, 800 years ago, and other places as well. Uh, and Biharul Anwar and many other books. The 11th Imam says that, وَأَمَّا فِي الْحَوَادِثِ الْوَاقِعَةِ This is by the Prophet of Islam. Uh, he says, فَأَمَّا فِي الْحَوَادِثِ الْوَاقِعَةِ فَرْجِئُوا فِيهَا لَرُوَاتِ أَحَدِيثِنَا فَإِنَّهُمْ حُجَّةِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَنَا حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ As for the, the, you know, the bad times that will be coming ahead, then refer to the ones who are experts in our traditions. Mm. Uh, and surely they are my proof over you, and I'm the proof of Allah over them. And that's why they call Hujjat al Islam because the Imam has used right. the word in whom Hujjati alaykum, they are my proof over you. And so this is by the 12th Imam al Islam. Uh, and the 11th Imam al Islam, because he's preparing the people for the occultation that is going to be coming, uh, he says, وَأَمَّا مِنَ الْفَقَهَاءِ سَاعِنَ لِنَفْسِهِ حَافِنَ لِدِهِهِ مُخَالِفًا لِحَبَاهُ مُتِيعًا لِأَمْرِ مَوْلَهُ فَلِلْعَوَامِ أَنْ يُقَلِّدُهُ The word taqlid has been used here. As for the scholars who are, as amongst the fuqaha, the scholars, whoever protects itself, سَاعِنَ لِنَفْسِهِ حَافِنَ لِدِينِهِ is protective of his religion. مُخَالِفًا لِحَبَاهُ Goes against his evil desires. مُتِيعًا لِأَمْرِ مَوْلَهُ and it is an obligation upon, upon the people to follow such a scholar. So all of these traditions and verses indicate upon taqlid. Now, all of them refer back to the traditions of the Ahlul Bayt, but the disputes are technical. Um, they may be referring to the same tradition or they may be referring to different traditions. Mm. They have not heard directly from the Imam. There are many t students of the Imams who have given different traditions. So sometimes the, there is dispute in the tradition, that's where the dispute comes in from. And sometimes it is technical. I'll give you a short example and I'll mm. end it there. For example, uh, there is dispute between the fuqaha, the scholars, that um, um, when you go to Mecca for Hajj or Umrah, if you're not staying there for 10 days, if you're staying there for less than 10 days, even then you have a choice of praying full prayers or shortened prayers. You know, Zohar Asar and Isha, the four rakat prayers become two rakats if you are traveling. Otherwise, you have to pray them in four rakats. In Mecca, you have a choice. In other places, but in Mecca especially. Now, the dispute amongst the fuqaha. The tradition says in Mecca, you have a choice. 
the, the fuqaha, the scholars say, in old Mecca, you have the choice. Not in the new Mecca, because when the hadith was said, Mecca was, for example, yeah. only four miles. Now Mecca is about 14 miles. So some say, no, the hadith said, you have a choice in Mecca. Mm -hmm. To, you know, in Mecca, you have a choice to pray full or shorten. No matter how big the Mecca becomes, you have the choice in all of Mecca. So it is technical. Um, you know, I've tried to simplify it, yeah. uh, the disputes. That's why the disputes happen. Otherwise, they're all based on Quran and Hadith. Mm -hmm. So I think the key to that is that um, we really need to be tolerant of uh, different interpretations and uh, different readings and not, you know, not let that become a source of uh, fitna, really, yes. between us. Yeah. Uh, I think we have another caller coming in. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Rahmatullah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, my name is Farina. I'm calling from West London. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to know a little more about Mutta. Right. And I'd like to know basically what are the guidelines um, set uh, with regards to it. Okay. Um, what's the logic behind it? And also, how would it be beneficial in what? terms for the, fam the institution of the family and also how would it be beneficial for a woman? Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank for, your you. thanks for your question. Uh, Muta itself or temporary marriage in Islam. Islam has two types of marriages. Uh, a permanent marriage which is known to be a normal common marriage and a temporary marriage uh, for which duration must be specified. Duration and mahar dowry must be specified um, and the agreement between the two sides. So th these are the conditions for muta. The formula must be recited, and the husband and wife can do it themselves. You know, recite the formula themselves. <coughs> this is what's called temporary marriage. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the, the, the question implying how does it protect a woman? Well, basically, it is discouraged for um, for unmarried women or um, uh, young women to to go into muta. They are encouraged to to get married permanently rather than going into muta. Um, and it is not permissible, according to most of the scholars, it is not permissible for young girls who are um, previously not married to, to um, temporarily marry someone or do muta without the father's consent. And the father, father wouldn't give the permission mm. because he would want them to be married permanently. Mm. So it is, you know, so the protection for the women is there. Now, one must remember there are many laws in this country or many Islamic laws which may be misused. The misuse of a law does not mean that the law is wrong. Yeah. The people who are misusing it, they are wrong. So it came in to protect the people from something haram, the things which take you towards haram things. So it was basically uh, legislated in Islam uh, to protect uh, the people indulging into haram and things which are forbidden. And many people misuse it. So that misuse does not mean that this law is wrong. Mm. The misusers are wrong. Yeah. Likewise, many of the laws which are misused. Yes, and so yeah, another very heavy uh, topic because uh, we all have a responsibility as well to try not to put our own personal desires or the desires of our nafs into Islamic law, but to really try to be objective and just as well in the way that we apply them, inshallah. So we're going to take another break. Uh, for our, In the next half hour will be our final half hour. You're watching Ahl Bayt live on Ahl Bayt TV, the first Islamic TV station broadcasting the teachings of the Ahl Bayt salam, in English throughout the UK. And inshallah, we will see you inshallah in five minutes. Asalaamu Alaikum. <laughs>